In this tutorial, we'll show you how to set up our SAML single sign-on together with Okta and just-in-time provisioning. With just-in-time provisioning, we mean we create and update users in your Atlassian application based on the SAML response that we retrieve from Okta. So we'll start off um, configuring our app in Jira, then move over to Okta to um, configure the um, SAML endpoint in Okta and all the additional settings that we need for just-in-time provisioning. And then we swap back to Jira to finish off the configuration and test it afterwards. We start here in user management and you see the only user I have is the administrator. So I'll show you how our plugin can create a user called CRLocal1 that I use for the demo here uh, and how it can log in with it. Uh, the plugin is already installed, so I've got a tab SAML single sign on. Let's go there. And when I go here for the first time, you see our first start wizard. Um, let's go to add new IDP. And I, actually, by the way, guys, if you get stuck in this tutorial somewhere or your situation doesn't quite fit what you see in the tutorial, uh, in many places you have the ability to contact support. So uh, please create a support case or schedule a free screen share session with us um, so that we can help you along or discuss your specific requirements. That's really what we love and that's what we're here for. But let's continue with the tutorial. Uh, let's take add new IDP here. And now I can select the identity provider. In our case, that will be Okta. You see, we already pre-configured a lot of um, uh, settings for the most popular IDPs. So you also see the uh, link to the step-by-step -step guides below here. So let's go to next. And now the plugin shows us all the URLs that I'll need on the Okta site. So I'll copy the SAML single sign-on URL, and then I move over to Okta. Now we're in Okta, where I'm already logged in with my admin account. Um, let's also go to the admin section in Okta. Let's go to admin. Now I need to go to applications, applications, and create an app integration. It's going to be a SAML 2.0 app. Go to next. Need to give it a name. I can say next, choose a good name because that's the um, name that people see on their application dashboard. Maybe give it also upload a logo that uh, people can identify um, with the app. And let's go to next here. Now I'm on the SAML settings. Um, here I need to paste the URL that I copied on our plugin site. And I need the same URL here again. And that's pretty much all I would have to do for the um, just pure SAML authentication side. That would send us a username in the name ID uh, in the SAML response. But in order to do just-in-time provisioning, I actually need um, a bit more information um, on our side to be able to create a user. So the minimum we need is a full name, an email address, um, and potentially if you want to manage memberships via this, group memberships via this way as well, uh, then the list of groups that the user is a member of. So, and to do that, we need to configure Okta to send us a couple more attributes in the summer response. Let's go here. So we need to add um, additional attribute statements. Okta doesn't really have a full name, uh, but it has first name and last name. So we'll create an attribute for each one of those and then combine them in our site um, in the plugin to a uh, full name. So let's do that. Let's take first and take Use our first name as the value, add another one, let's call that last for the last name. Uh, add another one for email. So that would be enough to create a user, but also if you want to uh, manage group memberships, then we need a group assignment statement here as well, which let's call that uh, groups. And here you can define a filter if you don't want all groups to be sent. Um, uh, to our site. Um, I want all of them for the moment, so I give it a regex.star, which means match everything, so it's essentially not really filtered. That's all we need to do here. Let's go to next. And now Okta always asks me an, an annoying survey. I'm an Okta customer with an internal app. Go to finish. Um, and now it gives me, gets me into the uh, apps configuration dialog. There's only two more things we need to do here. First, we need to copy the identity provider metadata URL. So let's right click that and say copy link address. 
The metadata actually contains a lot of the configuration info of the Okta site, and we can actually load that on our uh, plugin um, so that you don't have to do that manually or with a lot of cut and pasting. Yeah. And the last thing we need to do is assignments. And what Okta means with assignments is who can actually see this app on the dashboard and um, who is authorized to do single sign-on via this app. It doesn't, all, doesn't mean uh, you have actually access to Jira, that you still control via groups and Jira and the application access there. Um, so it means from the Okta side, who can see this app and use SAML to authenticate against it. Um, in the idea world, you choose matching groups um, that the people seeing the app on Okta can obviously also have the uh, application access rights in Jira. So I'm gonna do that via group and I'm gonna use the um, um, everyone group here, assign and say done. So that essentially everyone in my organization sees the app and has the right to do um, single sign on via SAML with it. So that's all we need on Okta. So let's go back to um, our plugin. Let's click next here. And now it asks me for the metadata URL, which I'm gonna give it here and say import. And you see metadata import was successful. So we can go to next now. So now it asks me about um, user ID and attribute transformation. I'm just gonna give you a quick highlight here what it means. So um, this is essentially, are the usernames being sent from um, Okta the same as the usernames being used in the um, Atlassian application? Um, if they are, you can leave that checked and we'll leave it checked for our um, demo here because we create the user and um, we make sure it's the same. But if the usernames um, don't match, um, you can do a lot of um, transformations here like dropping the um, domain name, for example, or do look up via um, email address instead of username. So that's what I meant with, if, if your scenario doesn't quite fit what we're showing here, then reach out to us. There's a large likelihood with a um, feature set of our plugin that we can solve that um, for you. But let's go back to the tutorial and let's keep it simple. We have matching user IDs on both sides. So let's go to next. Uh, and now it's asking us to configure um, um, user provisioning. And the method we wanna do here is update from SAML attributes. That's our just-in-time provisioning. And you see it gives me a couple more um, options now. So yes, I want to create new users in the internal directory. Um, and now it already suggests um, the values I've put in on the Okta site from the tutorial. Yeah, If you've chosen other names for the um, attributes, um, then you need to adjust them here accordingly. So you see the full name attribute is combined out of first and last, which was my first name and last name. The email attribute is email and um, uh, groups are being retrieved from the groups attribute. I could um, also add a couple more things like add non-existing groups um, to the Jira application, um, select, uh, assign users to a certain group all the time. Um, so again, if, you are, if it does, doesn't quite fit and it's not obvious to you how to do it, then reach out to us and ideally schedule a support session. So let's say save and next now. And that's pretty much it for the configuration. Now we come to the part where we uh, actually test it. So I'm gonna do start here. And that creates what we call an authentication tracker. An authentication tracker keeps a lot of the information like debug messages, the summer response, everything together about a um, single authentication. You see this URL it created, I'm gonna copy that. And now I'm gonna move over to an incognito window where I'm not authenticated and paste in that URL. That'll redirect us to um, uh, Jira, then Okta, get us logged in and uh, back into um, Jira if everything works. Um, so we can see if the single sign-on and user creation works um, by showing the user experience in that incognito window. And then afterwards we can go back here and see the results in the authentication tracker as well. So let me do that, incognito window. Let's paste the URL. Go to Jira, redirect it to Okta. Let's use my test user at resolution.de. And let's say sign in. 
can you see sign in to see a demo Jira and there we go we're back in Jira in the first start wizard because that's the first login for that user um, so all fine we successfully authenticated so let's go back to our Jira here and you see um, we have a success message on the authentication tracker but you also see status is logged in there's a lot of information, debug messages, the login information that we extracted from the summer response um, that we created the user, that that's true. Um, so a lot of information, the summer messages and responses are collected in this um, authentication tracker. So um, if this would have failed, then this authentication tracker can give you some good hints where it failed. Um, but also you, straight from here, you can say contact support and then open a support ticket with that tracker attached um, in our Jira service management uh, system so that we can hopefully help you quickly in what went wrong here. But we've had success, so we can click on next here. And this is really the last screen of the wizard. So far, nothing that we have done has interfered with users' authentication. They still saw their normal username and password. Um, and you remember we had this special um, URL for the authentication tracker to initiate the redirect. Uh, to Okta. If you now want to uh, redirect all your users to Okta for authentication, then you can um, select here enable SSO redirect and then say save and close. If you don't want to do that right now because um, you want to do that in a maintenance window or you want a couple more users to test it first and uh, deploy it at a later state, then leave this box unchecked, say save and close. Um, and you can always um, enable the redirection in the redirection tab of our um, SAML plugins configuration. So let's say save and close now. And then co that concludes our tutorial. And really at the risk of repeating myself, reach out to us if your situation is different or you get stuck or you get an error somewhere. Um, it's hard to make tutorials or documentation about all possible setups of um, this, especially since our plugin is so um, feature rich so then reach out to us open a support case or um, or schedule a screen share and we're really happy to help you thanks